Okay, today we're messing with a Savage 10 chambered in 308 Winchester. We're going to be using this as a coyote slash varminting rifle. So just for the sake of YouTube, I'm going to get this out of the way now. We're on a private range, shooting in a safe direction with a safe backstop. This is a bolt action rifle with a 10 round magazine. Now that we can move forward, um, I will list all of the loads that we are using in the description. So if you guys want details on equipment, and ammunition, please refer to the description so that I don't have to waste a bunch of time in video to talk about it. Uh, we are going to be starting with 110 VMAX loads using Vitivore N133 powder. I shot the first round on paper. I'm going to try to get velocities while we're doing this, provided my Garmin doesn't die. And um, we're going to try to keep track of all this stuff. Put the first round on paper just to make sure we were um, not going to kill the GoPro, per usual. And I'm going to go ahead and shoot the next two here. Uh, probably gonna mag feed all these they're, they're just three round groups so they're not gonna be high volume and try to keep the suppressor relatively cool and we're just trying to get a baseline for these bullets to see if any of them with these powder combinations are gonna shoot these so first one is on paper we're gonna keep the same point of aim not gonna change anything on the turrets mind you um, please ignore the gigantic scope on this thing I know it's obscene but it's what I had it's the only scope I had that wasn't attached to a rifle at the time so we put it on here and um, this is actually going to probably end up being a night gun, so uh, it's probably going to get a thermal on it. But the first velocity we got was 3186, which makes me happy. Let's go ahead and put these next two on paper and see where they land. That velocity was 3251, so we already jumped up 100 feet per second. I did clean this gun, so it's still probably getting fouled in a little bit. So the VMAX spread was pretty big and the accuracy wasn't that great. We're going to let this four-wheeler go by here. Give us just a moment. So the accuracy and the velocity on that was pretty crappy. Um, my Garmin's kind of being silly here. Uh, the summary of that was a 65 feet per second extreme spread with a 27 feet per second standard deviation and an average of 3220. So not good as far as consistency goes, which is fine because we're going to be trying a lot of different stuff here. But I'm going to start a new session here, and we're going to do a 110 Varminter from Sierra with Vitivori N133. So, same powder, same weight bullet, different profile of bullet. But these things are just, they're really ugly. Like, they don't fill up so much in the magazine, it just looks goofy. But, uh, they're going to be for blowing up uh, smaller things, so... So they should do the job pretty good as far as terminal performance goes, but they just don't look real good in the mag. I'm going to probably take our point of impact down quite a bit here, though, since we're so high. I'm just going to go for that top left diamond. My gut tells me it's a bad idea, but we're just going to do it anyway. Thirty-two sixty-eight. Thirty-two sixty. That's pretty consistent. Okay, so if I'm seeing this right, that velocity was thirty-two forty-five. That was a clover leaf. We're not quite at a hundred yards. We're probably between eighty and ninety yards right now, but that's still a dang good group. Probably, legitimately the best group I've ever shot with a three hundred eight. Even though it's a three-shot group, that's really good. Um, the recoil is incredibly pleasant since these are such light bullets this thing um, Which I've got it weighted down pretty good right now with the accessories that we put on it It won't be so bad when it's set up in the hunting configuration, but that was That was impressive the velocities were super consistent too. it looked like so <clears throat> As far as velocities go we had an average of 3258 an extreme spread of 22 and a standard deviation of 9 so I like it definitely good let's see if we can get some more of that next thing we're gonna be shooting is a 115 Sierra Varminter these definitely look a lot better in the magazine because they fill up a little bit more of that gap they don't just look so fat and stubby like me um, but they uh, they're also going to be pushed by Vitivorian 133 I'm trying to keep the powder in these groups somewhat consistent as much as I can per what grain weight we're shooting because obviously some of these grain weights are going to favor probably slower or faster powders but uh, 
these all three are gonna have the same powder that we just shot in the last two. Uh, that VMAX didn't shoot good at all. That 110 Sierra Varminter shot fantastic. And then I'm hoping that the 115 will shoot good as well. But um, like I said, the exact details of all this stuff will be in the description. So if you want grain weights, you'll have to check those out in the description and refer to the disclaimer, please. And stay safe when it comes to loading, obviously. But uh, 115 Varminter, we're gonna bring the point of impact down just a little bit more because we're still hitting kind of high. These heavy bullets should help us a little bit in that regard, but I'm still gonna do it just for the sake of trying to get these somewhat centered. We'll come down four clicks in mills here. I'm gonna go for the top right diamond. Well, the point of impact being changed to exactly where I want is a good sign. 3140 on that, or 3138, sorry. I keep rounding numbers off just for my own brain to comprehend it better. Thirty-one forty-five and thirty-one forty-eight. The velocity on that was an average of thirty-one forty-four. It was extreme spread of ten and a standard deviation of four. So the accuracy wasn't phenomenal, but the uh, the consistency, of the velocity is actually looking really good with that powder, except for with the the V Max load that looked like crap. All right, so we took quite a break. Um, it's starting to pick up a little bit with the rain now, so we may not be out here very much longer if it keeps getting worse. Um, we're shooting a Spear 125 grain TNT with N540, Vitivori N540 behind it, and we're going to shoot at the left side of the center diamond. Three thousand twenty-seven. 3017 That was a darn good group 2983 the only downside to that group was the velocity on that last shot was Quite a bit different. We did just switch powder though So our average was 3009 feet per second with an extreme spread of 44 and a standard deviation of 19 uh, the group was really good but we did uh, did have a weird velocity shift on that last round. Now, that being said, this this brass was not new brass. It was once fired brass, but it was once fired in another gun, and I shot different loads on a lot of them. So as far as having consistency on the brass side of things, I could have done a better job with starting with either fresh brass or firing a bunch of brass in this gun and then reloading it for this gun. I did not do that. So. Just understand that some of the inconsistencies here could be blamed on that. I just wanted to get a general idea of what powder and or bullet combination to go with for this gun. And this will probably tell me everything I need to know. I'm already leaning towards that 110 uh, Varminter, the Sierra bullet with the N133, just because it shot so well and the velocities were really consistent, pretty darn basically right out of the gate, which is always... Um, Always encouraging, but uh, I, we're gonna shoot the rest of these anyway, obviously, just to see how they do. And uh, I've never shot much lightweight 308, really no lightweight 308 as far as that goes. So this is all just partly for my own curiosity. The um, next bullet is 125 grain Sierra Game Changer or Tipped Game King, however you wanna say it. And this one is also going to be pushed by the Vitivori N540. We're gonna shoot at the center of the target here gonna get our velocities and then we will move over to um, shooting the same bullets again with different powders and we're just gonna probably try to keep them all on the same target if we can okay here we go on the center target with the 125 tip game kings 3103 3105 So I'm gonna be totally honest, that last uh, shot was 3,080. I think I pulled that second shot. I'm gonna blame that one on me. I don't know that for sure, but I'm I'm calling that a pulled shot because I do feel like I jerked the gun to the left a little bit, and I felt that when I pulled the trigger, but at that point it's too late anyway, and I wanted to see what the rest of the group looked like. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and say that one was me. I'm pretty sure that would have been a clover leaf group, or at least tighter on the uh, the windage side of things or the horizontal spread. But we can't go back now. So either way, I'm gonna give that one a little bit of a pass because I'm pretty sure that was my fault. But as far as the velocity spread goes, pretty good. It's average of 3,096 feet per second. Extreme spread of 25 in a standard deviation of 11 so still not bad at all for for a factory savage rifle it's it's got a different barrel nut but it's the original barrel i know that's a little weird but um it's not a custom barrel this is the the barrel was removed to be threaded and the new barrel nut was put on same recoil lug so for those of you that are wondering again i'm going to try to put all the equipment info in the description if you are curious so the next load here is going to be a 110 VMAX, which is what we started with earlier, but <clears throat> the 110 VMAX that we had fired earlier was using some Vitivori N133. This time we were going to be shooting Benchmark powder by Hodgden. We're going to be shooting at the right of the center diamond with that 110 VMAX and Benchmark. Three thousand two hundred and eighty. Three thousand two hundred and sixty nine. Three thirty two sixty nine. Starting to get some mirage going here. I'm gonna try to let it cool off just a second. I'll tell you what. First time I shot these VMAX bullets, they did not shoot good at all, but that shot really well. This gun is shooting like a champ. So the accuracy was really good. The velocity looked to be pretty consistent too. The velocity on that last one was 3270, which is right in there with the rest of them. The velocity data was average of 3273, extreme spread of 12, and a standard deviation of 5. So pretty solid. I will take that. So we are going in the same order that we went when we shot the first batch of cartridges as far as the bullets go. So we are shooting the Sierra 110 Varminter again, which is that really short, stubby little guy. And we are pushing that one with benchmark this time as well. <clears throat> we're gonna go for the bottom left diamond. Thirty-two forty. Thirty-two sixty-one. 3258. Holy crap. This gun, this barrel really likes that bullet. <laughs> the top left and the bottom left groups were with the same projectile with that Sierra 110 Varminer and both of them shot dang near into one freaking hole. I'm not used to seeing that with some of my best rifles, so that is really fun. Um, very cool. So, the session summary, we're looking at a average muzzle velocity of 32.53, extreme spread of 21, and a standard deviation of 9. That will take down a coyote. So, good stuff. Very good stuff. This gun is getting hot, unfortunately, because we're running out of daylight. I really want to give this thing some more time to cool off. We may just have to plug away and get this done, but the thing's shooting pretty good even with a warm barrel. And by warm, I mean pretty warm. So, I don't know, we just may go ahead and finish this out. I'm going to give it a little bit of time to cool off here, but we probably are going to cool it down a little bit and then just shoot the last three and call it a day. Okay, so the next group that we're going to be doing is with the Sierra 115 grain Varminter. And that one is going to be pushed by Vitivori N135, which earlier we used the 133, but this is going to be with the 135. So just a little bit difference there. I mean, as far as the model number goes, but the burn rate supposedly actually pretty good chunk different. I'm still getting quite a bit of mirage here, which is a little disappointing because... I did 
give it a while to cool off here. It's still warm, but it's it's a very calm day. And unfortunately, you either get a windy day, which is annoying, or you get such a calm day that you can't see through your scope anymore annoying. <laughs> you just get one or the other. You, you lose both ways, it feels like. But we're getting some pretty darn good groups, so clearly it's not uh, gonna cause enough of an issue for us to not be able to find a good load today. Okay, aiming for the bottom of the center diamond here. The 115 Sierra Varminter. I feel like we're trending left a little bit here. 32, 35. 32, 42. 32, 44. All right, so that was some tight velocity spread. The accuracy wasn't stellar, but the velocity was pretty dang consistent. So their average was 3240, extreme spread was eight, and the standard deviation was three and a half. I had heavy bolt lift on that second one, but um, really I think it was just because these guns were fired in another chamber, because there's a little bit of pressure sign on there, but the rest of them, extra even the last round, extracted just fine. So um, I think part of it has to do with the fact that they probably weren't sized good enough or as well as they should have been. But it's the rest of the time has seemed to only benefit us, if anything. So we're going to go ahead, move on to the next one. The next one is going to be the 125 grain Spear TNT. And again, we're going to be shooting Benchmark. So. We're going to put that one on the bottom right diamond. The last group, we're probably just going to kind of float out in the middle of nowhere just so that we can put it on this target and not have to put a different target up for one group. Okay, spear 125 grain TNT going on the bottom right diamond here. Twenty nine eighty nine. Twenty nine ninety one. And twenty nine sixty three. Twenty nine eighty one on the average velocity there with an extreme spread of twenty nine and a standard deviation of thirteen. The accuracy was not bad. Pretty good actually. I'm just I'm getting spoiled at this point and expecting them all to go in one hole. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and just move the point of impact up so that we can shoot at that same target we're going to put it on the top left corner of the target it's not going to be on the top left diamond but we're going to put it up in that area so we're going to go probably aim at the left side of the diamond and then just move it up about a mil so that it's in that white area it should be pretty easy to see okay so the last group here is going to be the sierra 125 grain tipped game king or game changer whichever you prefer to refer to it as and it's going to be pushed with benchmark as well and we're just going to put it on the top left area on the target That honestly looked a lot like the last group we shot with those bullets. 3,024 on that last one. So that was a pretty tight velocity spread on those too. Even though this thing's really hot at this point, still shooting very well for how hot that barrel is. I'm impressed. And keeping some tight velocities. So 3,027 feet per second average, extreme spread of 11 and a standard deviation of five. So ending on a good note to say the least group could have been a little bit better considering we had a couple groups where there was like an indistinguishable hole <laughs> but uh i think we're gonna go with we're gonna go with the 110 varminter for sure either with benchmark or with the n133 i'm probably going to take them out again and test them just to verify that they're going to shoot that good or uh maybe i mean they shot into basically, as far as I can tell, looking down there, they're either a ragged hole on the top one or just a basically one hole on the other one. So 
they that bullet can shoot exceptionally well. We know that obviously from that, but which powder we choose, I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering right, the velocity on them was almost identical between the two charges, but I just always like to go out and shoot it again and make sure that it wasn't like a fluke, which again, two groups with the same bullet, obviously it can shoot really well, but um, we'll, uh, we'll retest it, just double check, make sure that it's, um, it's a good load or which one we wanna go with, aside from there. And then we'll uh, we'll use that for the the night hunting coyote season as long as everything goes to plan. So anyway, as far as that goes, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please do so in the comment section below, and check the description if you want more details on this stuff. We will hopefully see you on the next video. Y'all stay risen, take care, and uh, be safe.